Welcome to Transcend Awards. Risk controls in gymnastics environments. Gymnastic environments. Duties associated with risk assessment. Gymnastics venue operators must assess the risks to all who are affected by gymnastics activities associated with infectious disease, which includes staff, participants, visitors, external hirers. They must introduce measures which include safe operating procedures to manage those risks. They must communicate risks and controls through safe operating procedures to all employees. They must record the significant findings of their risk assessments. They must conduct regular reviews of the risk assessment, especially when there is a change. Duties associated with infectious prevention controls. The industry governing bodies and regulators have identified risks and confirmed explicit controls which will prevent the transmission of infectious disease in indoor sports. Risks are associated with contracting a range of diseases. Controls include good hygiene practice, changing and showering, cleaning procedures, effective management of space and physical considerations for facilities, robust procedures to manage equipment and apparatus, robust procedures, policies and training for staff, rigorous precautions for gymnasts and visitors. Let's look at each control in detail to enable gymnastic operators to embed these into safe operating procedures designed to prevent transmission of infectious disease. Duties associated with hygiene via cleaning controls. Duties associated with hygiene include stringent cleaning techniques. Cleaning the environment and equipment is essential to the control of infection in gymnastics environment settings. A nominated member of staff should be chosen, known as COVID officer, to monitor cleaning standards and discuss any issues with staff. Cleaning tasks and schedules must clearly describe the activities needed, the frequency and who will carry them out and what product or chemical is needed. Cleaning tasks and standards should be monitored regularly by the management team and or the COVID officer with clear sign-off sheets stating who, where, what and when cleaning occurred. Staff should be appropriately trained and have access to appropriate cleaning equipment and personal protective equipment, PPE. A comprehensive cleaning schedule should include daily, weekly and periodic cleaning tasks based on national guidance and organisational policies and procedures. All cleaning products and chemicals are stored and labelled correctly and safely. Colour-coded equipment is the best method to prevent cross-contamination of infection. Examples include red for toilet hand wash basins and sinks, yellow for changing rooms, blue for general areas, green for equipment and toys. Duties associated with hygiene via cleaning controls. Cleaning solutions should be used and stored in accordance with the control of substances hazardous to health or COSH. Cleaning equipment must be changed and decontaminated regularly. Cloths must be disposable or disinfected after every use. During times of outbreak, cleaning schedules must be enhanced and more frequent to reduce risk of transmission. The cleaning in a gymnastics environment should include changing rooms, furniture, surfaces, cubicles, showers, toilets, sinks, baby changing facilities, handrails, 
door handles, entry and exit barriers, lockers, towel or coat hooks, viewing galleries, spectator areas including tables and chairs, mats, gymnastics apparatus and equipment. All equipment used in and around the gymnastics halls including entry and exit doors should be cleaned for every group or session so time for handovers will need to be considered. Duties associated with hygiene via hand washing controls. Duties associated with hygiene include stringent hand washing controls. This is one of the most important ways of controlling the spread of infections, especially those that cause diarrhea and vomiting and respiratory disease. Recommendations include use of liquid soap, warm water and paper towels for 20 seconds as a minimum. Small children to be taught a hand wash song to make sure they complete the recommended hand wash time. All staff and participants to wash their hands after using the toilet, before eating or handling food and after touching new equipment or handles signage placed around the facility as reminders for all staff, participants and visitors. During times of outbreak or pandemic, hand washing schedules must increase. Participants could be encouraged to wash sanitised hands on immediate entry to the gymnastics venue, at regular times when in the building and prior to departure. Duties associated with hygiene via cough etiquette controls. Duties associated with hygiene include reminders of coughing and sneezing etiquette as coughs and sneezes spread disease. This should occur at all times and staff are encouraged to introduce this as a common preventative measure. Children and adults should be encouraged to cover their mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing at all times. Disposable antibacterial wipes or tissues should be available nearby for immediate use. Children and adults should be encouraged to dispose of used wipes or tissues into designated bins immediately after use. Children and adults should wash or sanitize hands after using or disposing of tissues or wipes. Spitting should be discouraged at all times just by way of good manners. During an outbreak, children must be made aware of the seriousness of this. During times of outbreak or pandemic, coughing and sneezing etiquette reminders must increase and tissues and disposable antibacterial wipes and sanitizer should be made readily available. duties associated with hygiene via changing and showering controls. Duties associated with hygiene include changing and showering as gymnasts may need to remove clothing and store safely along with possible options for showering. Operators and external hirers need the following considerations. Capacity of the changing rooms removing or putting out of use hair dryers and hand dryers. Space and access to and from the gym hall to maintain social distance. Not allowing use of showers and limiting time permitted in changing rooms. Staggering activity times to reduce the number of individuals in changing rooms. Scheduling time for regular and deep cleaning of changing rooms, showers and toilets encouraging gymnasts to be gym ready on arrival. Designated changing spots or cubicles or bag or clothing storage areas per customer to avoid cross-contamination. It would be highly recommended that all operators and external hirers read the national guidance from British Gymnastics, UK Active, Simspa, etc the detailed descriptions and examples of controls that will support effective management of gymnastics environments. 
duties associated with hygiene via entry and exit to venue. Duties associated with hygiene include entering and exiting the facility and the internal areas. Consideration needs to be given to the signage and hygiene controls for this, as well as the gymnastics activities themselves. Operators should install clear signage from the car park, facility entry and throughout all areas. Ensure touch points are included in the cleaning schedule. Limit touch points for entry, automatic doors, removal of physical barriers and keeping internal doors open. Signage and communication to customers and visitors, including external hirers, should be consistent. Install hand gel or hand washing facilities on entry and exit of the facility and in areas where internal access is required. Consider implementing one-way movement throughout the facility or containing visitors or participants in areas to avoid cross-contamination. Duties associated with own hygiene and well-being controls. Duties associated with own personal hygiene, wellness and well-being are crucial for the individual's safety and reducing risk of transition of infection to others. Ensure staff report any signs or symptoms of COVID-19, get tested and evidence status of infection. Staff and individuals to self-isolate for two weeks if showing any signs or symptoms. Staff and all individuals should understand that even if they feel well, they could contaminate the facility and others. Ensure they understand the need to stay home. Operators should have a workforce plan to ensure viable continuation of gymnastics activities in the event of staff sickness or leave, including HR policies and absence records. Ensure customers sign disclaimer form reporting no known symptoms or free of symptoms to be able to participate and their understanding to report any changes. Ensure staff and customer emergency contact records are up to date. Not sharing water bottles or food and keeping individual items to self. Staff and participants should be encouraged to maintain a healthy lifestyle for strong immunity and lower risk of infection. Duties associated with hygiene for medical incidents. Duties associated with hygiene include effective controls in the event of a cut, bite or bleed. Staff should be aware of the operator's health and safety policy and manage situations such as cuts, bites and bleeds according to that policy. This includes the identification and training of nominated first aiders for the venue. If a cut or bite does not break the skin, clean with soap and water, take no further action. If a cut or bite breaks the skin, Use gloves to clean immediately with soap and running water. Record incident in accident book. Seek medical advice as soon as possible. In seeking medical advice, you should solicit information to treat potential infection, to protect against hepatitis B and to gain reassurance for HIV infection. Needles used to manage conditions must be handled with care in accordance with policy. In the event that a staff member or customer does injure themselves with a hypodermic needle, make sure this is discarded in line with policy and then wash wound with soap and water, cover with waterproof plaster, record incident in the accident book, seek immediate medical attention from A&E. Duties associated with hygiene via cleaning controls for human spillages. Duties associated with hygiene include robust cleaning of blood and body fluid spills. 
all spillages of blood, feces, saliva and vomit should be cleaned up immediately wearing personal protective equipment. Spillages must always be cleaned using a product which combines detergent and disinfectant. It is effective against both bacteria and viruses. Manufacturer's instructions must be followed. Disposable paper towels or cloths must be used to clean blood and body fluid spills and disposed of after use. A spillage kit must be available for blood spills. When managing any situation, which includes first aid or cleaning of blood or bodily fluids, you must always wear disposable gloves and plastic aprons. Gloves should be disposable, non-powdered vinyl or latex free and CE marked. You should also wear goggles if there is a risk of splashing to the face. Duties associated with hygiene via nappy management controls. Duties associated with hygiene include effective nappy management where this is needed, noting that hygiene practices depend on adequate facilities. Children in nappies must have a designated changing area away from the gymnastics hall and from any area where food or drink is prepared or consumed. Hand washing facilities must be available in the changing area so that the adult can wash and dry their hands after every nappy change before handling another child or leaving the nappy changing room. Soiled nappies should be wrapped in a plastic bag before disposal in the appropriate centre waste disposal facilities. Children's skin must be cleaned with disposable wipes. Flannels should never be used and nappy creams and lotions labelled with the child's name and not shared with others. Changing mats must be cleaned with soapy water or a wipe after each use. Mats should be cleaned thoroughly with hot soapy water at the end of every day and discarded if there is any damage. It is advised to package nappy waste separately from other waste streams. Those that produce significant amounts of used nappies should contact their local authority to discuss appropriate disposal arrangements. Rubber gloves should be washed whilst wearing them and then wash and dry hands after taking them off. Duties associated with hygiene via sanitary controls. Duties associated with hygiene include effective sanitary controls, noting that hygiene practices depend on the adequate facilities. A hand wash basin with warm running water along with a mild liquid soap, preferably wall mounted with disposable cartridges, should be available. Bar soap should not be used. Disposable paper towels must be placed next to basins in wall mounted dispensers together with a nearby foot or sensor-operated waste paper bin. Toilet paper should be available in each cubicle. If venues experience problems with overuse, they could consider installing paper dispensers to manage this. Suitable sanitary disposal facilities should be provided where there are female staff and customers aged 9 or over, junior and senior age groups. This ideally should be foot or sensor operated. Participants who use continence aids, such as continence pads or catheters, should be encouraged to be as independent as possible. The principles of basic hygiene should be applied by both customers and staff. Continence pads should be changed in a designated area and disposable non-powdered vinyl or latex gloves and a disposable plastic apron worn. Gloves and aprons should be changed after every use. Hand washing facilities should be readily available. Duties associated with hygiene controls for toys and equipment. The cleaning schedule should identify who, what, when and how gymnast apparatus, handheld equipment, toys and venue equipment should be cleaned and be monitored. 
it is recommended that only hard toys and equipment are used to enable them to be cleaned after each play. Any damaged item that cannot be cleaned or repaired must be discarded. It is recommended that sufficient time between gymnastics activities are scheduled to allow for cleaning and reduce chance of clustering groups outside gym halls or in changing areas. Where possible, participants should and can bring their own equipment, including their own water bottles. Where possible, coaches should remain in the same coaching area throughout structured gymnastics activities and aim to use and clean the same equipment for their classes throughout their shift. Consider having multiple sets of equipment used in alternate lessons so one set can be cleaned whilst one is in use. Or designate a selection of equipment to each gymnast for the duration of the session and not to be shared amongst participants. Wherever possible, adults and coaches should discourage all children from placing equipment in their mouths. Thank you for watching. Feel free to watch as many times as you need or move on to the next part of your digital learning experience on your list.